So good afternoon, everyone. I'm Joe Flick with the Montana State Library, and I'm here with my friend Aaron Fashaway, who is the state GIS coordinator. And Aaron's going to walk us through a little bit about her job and what the GIS people at the State Library in Montana do. And GIS is kind of um, not always positioned at a state library. I think that's a little unusual, but it really works for us here in Montana. So just gonna turn things over to you, Erin, and I'll stop my video and let you take it from here. Okay, thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, I'm just gonna uh, leave my, my camera on just for a minute because I don't wanna suck the bandwidth with my video running, but um, I wanted to thank everyone for joining us today. And again, uh, thanks to Joe for the introduction. My name is Erin Fashaway. I am the state GIS coordinator. And um, some of the folks were commenting on this slide before we started the recording about how Christmassy it is. I borrowed this slide from Esri, which is um, one of our partners and also a uh, um, software provider. And I think it just, it's a really unique slide. And basically with GIS, you can see what others can. So I just thought that that was um, very, um, uh, very appropriate for uh, what we're gonna talk about today and just GIS in general. So with that being said, I will go ahead and move forward. Um, so GIS, what is GIS? Um, it's, uh, it's basically, these are the five components of, of a geographic information system. So GIS stands for Geographic Information Systems. And it's a system for capturing, storing, checking, analyzing, and displaying data related to the position on Earth's surface. That's very technical. Um, nowadays, we have these tools that make it really easy for anyone um, to really become um, a quick user of GIS. But behind the scenes, you should know this is this is a, there's a lot of work that goes into some of those beautiful maps that you uh, see online. I kind of joke around with my colleagues saying people think GIS is magic, they'll ask you for something very complicated and expect it the next day. <laughs> and so um, there's a lot that goes into it. And so um, uh, one of the first components is people. So my colleagues and I, we've got analysts, we have technicians, we have GIS specialists. I myself am the state coordinator. I represent Montana on national matters. Um, and then, of course, we have all the information, all the information, the data that people want access to, whether that's the cadastral or um, people want to see a school district boundary, um, some of the other information we uh, um, that we carry here at MSL in statewide layers could be water, um, soils, and I'll, I'll, I'll hit on some of those later. Um, and then the hardware. Um, so the hardware are the machines that we use, whether it's the device um, that you're, you could be logging into this meeting on a, uh, on a computer, on a tablet, on an iPhone. There's so many different things um, uh, that you can access GIS on nowadays. And that also is, is the hardware for capturing information, whether it's, uh, again, a tablet for field work or perhaps a GPS or some sort of remote, remote monitoring station. And then, of course, the software. So that is like the application that you use to research um, land ownership in the state of Montana, the, app, the applications or the software packages that we use uh, internal to MSL to manage that information. And then the methods. There's some there's methods behind most scientific processes. And the, so those are our workflows, our policies, how we get um, our information um, uh, to its its final state for, for publication. And then just the methods behind analysis as well, how we got to, how we quantify things in certain ways and, um, and, and why we chose that information. And we're constantly working across all different types of information and professions. And so this is just kind of like a little slide to talk about all the information that we have available um, in the state. It's a, it's a fun little graphic. So the Montana, um, the Montana Spatial Data Infrastructure uh, was created about 2005. Well, it started under, um, under an act uh, called the Montana Land Information Act. And over time, we've built this framework or this infrastructure for the state of Montana. These are basically the data layers that um, that stakeholders and um, government got together and decided this, these were absolutely necessary and appropriate 
to do business in the state of Montana. And so um, is from administrative boundaries all the way to wetlands and riparian. Some of these are modeled off of a, of a national spatial data infrastructure. So that means that <clears throat> the ones that are starred has a national data layer that we federate the information to. So the way that that works is we collect information from, from local or regional or tribal government, and then we um, federate that into statewide data layers. And then, um, and then we send that along to our federal par partners. So that information then can live in a national uh, uh, spatial data infrastructure. So there's a lot of moving parts and, um, and we've got a lot of really well-established uh, framework data layers that you can see here. I'm not gonna read through all of them. We have partnerships established. Like I said, we work across a variety of different professions, whether that's public safety, sheriffs and peace officers, um, public safety answering points, next gen 911 centers. We work with hydrologists and geologists. We work with um, healthcare professionals, epidemiologists. We work with school administrators. And so it's really just a wide variety of information that we're working with the different professions to collect these statewide um, infrastructure layers. And then each, in order to be a spatial data infrastructure layer, we need to have statewide data behind it. And there's usually work groups and, um, and teams working together to try to um, come up with the best um, <clears throat> workflows and explore new technologies, explore new data needs. And so it's, um, it's quite a process um, throughout the year for planning for these 15 individual layers um, through their groups themselves, and then um, uh, at the local level, at the state level, and then at the national level. Um, a lot of this information you will see um, through some services that we provide at the state library. You'll see it integrated into different web applications, and we'll go through some of that today with the cadastral. And so that being said, I'm going to dive right into the cadastral. So the cadastral, the cadastral application is a partnership. So um, like I had said earlier, we take information from local government. Um, and if it is available through whether it's a city or county um, government, and then um, and for cadastral itself, we have five counties that we work with to um, to take their cadastral mapping application information, whether it's uh, tax parcels or public land survey data, we ingest that into our statewide layers. And then the other partner um, uh, for this application is the Department of Revenue. So um, they are responsible for the what's called the Orion database, if you've, if you've never heard of it before, uh, Orion like the constellation. And it is the computer aided mass appraisal. So CAMA, that's also another um, acronym you may or may not have heard of before. So I'm gonna go ahead and open up the application now. So the quickest way to get to it is um, gis.mt.gov. And so um, what the Montana State Library is responsible for is the geography behind it. So we're responsible for maintaining the tax parcels. We gather that information from local governments and from the Department of Revenue and make it available in statewide data, data um, databases and then also individual county databases. We make it available as a web service so you can hit it through an application. Um, so the data is streaming live through the, the web. We also make it available in downloadable data sets. We have an archive going back until uh, to about 2002. Um, we don't have a monthly archive for 2002, but if you're interested, please let us know and we can help you um, uh, find that information. So this is the, this is the homepage. Um, and when you first get to this page, you see this map of Montana. So there really is a lot of other data layers going into it. You can see some of the public lands, you can see some of the national parks, the roads, so that's the transportation data set. And then you also can see the county boundaries. Um, <clears throat> and then when you dive in deeper, every time you zoom in, different things are gonna turn on. It's called a scale dependency. And so um, <clears throat> we are going to just go through this, um, 
this application. So if you ever, uh, just the basics of it, if you have a, a, a mouse with a roller ball and you click inside the map, you can, um, you can roll in and out and it will zoom you in and out. And so it's like kind of very basic functionality. And then you have this um, uh, toolbar in the top right corner of the screen where you can see the plus, in, the plus uh, and minus. So that's again, zooming in and out. And then we've got two, three different um, base maps. So when you turn them on, you will see different, um, different types of information revealed. So I'm gonna zoom in again, turn on the aerial imagery. And that's always fun to see. So we use an imagery service that tries to stream the most up-to-date free information uh, for aerial imagery in Montana. Uh, I do believe this is probably some 2020 or 2019 data that we're looking at now. We have a tool and there's um, a resource to go in and to, so you can see the exact um, date that this was collected. And so you have to reach a certain um, uh, scale in order for the parcels to turn on when you're on um, aerial or topo view. And that's because you don't want them all drawing at a, at, a, um, at a small scale, at the statewide scale, because you just wouldn't be able to see anything else. And so I'm just going to zoom into Flathead Lake. So you can see a lot of folks use the cadastral just to explore the imagery, which is perfectly fine. So it must have been a beautiful day where everyone was boating out on the lake. Um, and then if you want to go back and forth, if you're, if you're doing some research and you'd like to go back and forth in between your, um, in between your recent scales, you can click the previous or next button. So if I go and click previous, it just kind of goes through the, the, either the pan or zoom areas that I was at, um, the click before that. So it's a helpful tool, um, to just go back to the area. If you can't remember where you were you could use this, uh, these pre previous and next kind of forwarding through whether you changed, um, you panned by just holding the screen down and dragging across, or you zoomed in uh, by using the plus or the roller ball. It will, these previous and next will take you back um, to where you were previously. Another important um, tool to know just when you're getting started is to click on this uh, button up at the top left. If you hover over it, hopefully you can see it. It's it. There's a tool tip that comes on. It's, it says reset map, and then it also makes this um, the Montana cadastral button um, kind of blue in nature. And so if you click on it, it resets everything. So it takes you back to home. So it's very similar to the home button you you might see in other applications. Okay, um, so let's let's kind of dive in to uh, the search. So there are multiple ways to search for information in this application. And um, if you click on search, the first button uh, underneath the home button or the Montana cadastral button, a side menu is gonna pop out to the right. And, um, and there are several different searches that you can use here, anywhere from owner to geocode to certificate of survey or address search. And so um, I, I always, I apologize if anyone has the name Smith, I always just use the word Smith because it's such a common name. And so you can just pick a county. So I'm going to pick Gallatin County. I'm gonna type in the word Smith. So I'm typing in the last name. It's gonna be the best result. And then I'm gonna click search and chances are we're gonna get a long list of Smiths in Gallatin County. So, and it turned, it returned a pretty fast search. And so um, it's, you, you saw that there was maybe a little bar there saying it was working on it, but you can see that there's quite a few Smiths and there's probably about three to 400 records here that were returned. And so I'm just gonna randomly choose one. So um, let's choose Roger Smith. If we click on that, um, so, okay, what I wanted you to see, and it probably happened quickly, but I clicked on the owner name in the left hand side in that uh, choose parcel search criteria, and a couple things happened. Number one, a property record card opened up, so it slid out to the right, and then number two, it zoomed me, it did an automatic zoom to that property um, in the map itself, so you can see now that it's highlighted in blue. And I'm going to close the search criteria just so we can focus on the property record card. 
So the property record card gives us a summary of information for that particular property. And so um, <clears throat> we have what's called the geo code, also known as a parcel ID. We have um, a subcategory. So this is classified as agriculture and timber properties and a lot of really great information about the property itself. Um, and then if we turn the aerial imagery on, we can actually see the property. So this looks like an agricultural property. I don't see any buildings on it. So I'm just gonna zoom out till I find a building because that will give us interesting information in the um, property record card. Okay. So if you get that, you cannot click on a parcel. It's just that you're not zoomed out to the right. Um, you're, you're zoomed out too far and the parcels aren't turned on yet. So it's not gonna return information. So I'm just going to zoom into here to a community uh, that was east of this um, this parcel, and I'm going to click on a parcel itself. And um, so that's, there's multiple ways to, to, to click on a parcel or to identify a parcel, number one, knowing information about the parcel or just doing a, you know, a curious search with the uh, zoom pan and click and uh, clicking on the individual parcel itself. And every time you click on one of these parcels, the property record card is going to change and you're gonna get more information about that. So um, I'm just gonna click on this house on the corner. And so this is the primary owner um, uh, information. It, it kind of shows up. These are some of the things that people wanna know immediately. We've tried to summarize it in this top part of the property record card. And then, um, and then you just get a lot of really uh, valuable information about that, whether it's the legal description, the subdivision, um, uh, the, the property address versus the, the owner address. So there's a lot of great information in there. And then once, um, when you click on these tabs below, what it's gonna do is it's going to expand that area and give you uh, other information about that uh, about that individual property. Not, not every, um, not every uh, property record card is going to have the same information. It really depends on the type of property itself on what is going to be collected. So um, this, this um, you can see the two years of appraisal history for this property, the building value and then the land value. Um, and so that's under appraisals. That's another really uh, valuable piece of information that people um, like to utilize. And then there's more market land um, information that tells you the, um, the actual size of the property itself. So this, this property here is 20.22 uh, acres. And then if we click on, click on dwellings, Oh, the information is vacant. Let me click on this one. Okay, this is a better example. If I've clicked on the property record card to the left of that, if you click, click on, um, uh, so dwellings, this is where you get more information about the building itself. So you can see the year that the building, um, in this case, it's a house, was built, um, the style, it's a ranch style, um, and then a lot of really great information about the quantity of bedrooms, the type of heating and cooling, whether or not it has a basement and so on and so on. So if you would, uh, you can scroll through here and, and reveal more information. Um, some folks think that because this is blue color, you can click on it and um, it is not, it's just, the, it's just the color of the print through here. So that's just something to utilize. Uh, typically in blue, when you see it in, on applications, it's, uh, it's an indication that you can click on it. But in this case, you cannot, it's just the way that they've, uh, tailored this particular property record card. So I'm just gonna click through here so you can see, you know, if this was a commercial property, you would see more commercial information. And this is not ag or forest land, so you're really not gonna see any information there um, because it is a residential dwelling. Um, going back to the uh, tax year uh, or this property record card at the top, we've got tax year and so, um, we, there's 22, 21, and 2020. So this is another uh, piece of information that we partner with the Department of Revenue on. We basically connect to their databases and um, <clears throat> through this application. And so they're working to put in the updated tax information. They're starting to do 2022, but we're not quite sure when um, that will be um, that will be 
uh, added to the system. It's a it's a very large state. They were affected by the budget cuts, um, the state budget cuts back in 2017 as well, and had to close a lot of offices. So they're um, you know they're feeling the effects of a of a shorter or tighter staff. Um, uh, like a lot of uh, a lot of us were at the time and so um if you were interested in the 2022 it might be there i would just start exploring it typically we send out information when we know that 2022 is finalized um, and actually department of revenue i think is still working on 2021 tax information as well so um, that's just kind of a uh, an FYI there. Another fun tool, if you wanted to explore the map more, is you could hide the property record card. This, this works best on a um, on a uh, on a computer, um, not a, a mobile device, and so you can hide that property record card, and um, and then you don't have to see the information anymore, and you can explore the map. Okay, so I'm going to close the search and start another search. Um, well, I'll just go through the different types of searches. So the first one, if you can recall, we chose a county and then we chose an owner name. You can also search by a geocode. So that is that, um, I think it's like a 20 digit code that, um, that is basically the unique parcel ID. Um, if you have uh, any kind of an assessment code, a certificate of survey, and you have to choose the county for each one. You can also search by address, which is another um, important uh, use of information. So this is a address data is kind of a, um, a I guess a, a data set that people take it for granted because there's a lot of information that goes into collecting statewide address data. So I'm just going to type in an address. So 1515 6th Avenue. Helena, Montana. And then below this, it gives you the tips and tricks on what it needs, um, what this search needs in order to complete a proper address search. So I'm going to click on that. Did you mean Montana City? No, I did not. Okay. I'm going to have to, this is a live demonstration, so yeah. things happen. <laughs> so I'm going to have to look into why that is not working right now. There we East, go. Okay. I think. Yeah, thank yeah. you. I dropped, um, I dropped Montana and it ended up, uh, it didn't oh, like went to Montana. To, oh, it went right to Montana yeah. City. Yeah, I think it had to do with... Um, it's not expecting that because we're in, a, it's a Montana application, but if you ever use Google Maps, you typically have to put the state in there. It's a very common piece of information when entering an address, the state. So um, <clears throat> here is, a, if you've never been to Helena or have never been to the Montana State Library, this is what our building looks like from above. And uh, my car is probably there, who knows? Um, and so um, if you enter this, uh, if you enter the uh, address in, it will pop up that, um, a couple different um, variety of addresses. And I'm not really gonna get into that today because it's a very technical, a highly technical thing, but there are a couple different options. One is being placed directly on the building and the other one is the street address where there's an address range to choose from. And so um, I typed in my uh, our address here for our office building and it gave us a couple different options which all fall within a couple, um, probably less than hundred feet. So it works for me. And then when I click on this building, it's going to reveal that um, the information about the building, and so uh, um, this is a state building, so it's owned by the state of Montana. So it's it's a pretty unique um, uh, application, and just really a, a really wealth of information here. And it looks like we're already at four o'clock almost. So I'm just going to dive through here really quickly. Those are those are some of the tools that you will need to research information. But there's more that I I, I want to just highlight, uh, given we're kind of in a time crunch. Um, <clears throat> so within the search, you can search by just one more time. I want to reiterate: owner name, geocode, which is also known as a parcel ID, assessment code, certificate of survey code, address, and then you can search by a subdivision. So if a um, if a this actually gives you all the lists of subdivisions, so it's pretty neat to see that. 
Um, <clears throat> and then there is the data that you can download. This will take you um, to an FTP site where you can access that first link, you can access the downloadable data sets. You do need to have GIS software in order to, um, in order to view it. So those are for like um, uh, the professionals that are, are either GIS professionals or use GIS in their tool as part of their tool belts. Um, and we make this data available through these types of applications um, for citizens that might not have access to those, um, to those specific tools. And then um, more information here or more tools that you can use um, are the tools themselves. Um, it's always centered um, on the identify tool. So it always starts with the identify tool. So these are all state buildings. I'm gonna back out a little. So that means that whenever you're in the map and you're, um, and you're navigating around, when you click on something, it's identifying that, that, that parcel or that, um, that piece of uh, land. The quick zoom, this is pretty neat. If you're not um, if you're not sure of geography and you want to find a city, um, uh, you can use this to uh, do a quick zoom. So I'm going to quick zoom to Bab. So I choose that. It's just going to center on the town um, of Bab, and the same goes for counties. So um, uh, I would say most people are pretty um, familiar with the state's counties, but we have a lot of folks from out of state that are using this tool. And uh, so you can have a quick view to the county. And then the other one that's extremely important is a uh, section township and range. And so um, you would use that to, um, to identify or drill down even further into the map. Um, so let me just choose one really quick. Hopefully I'm gonna choose one that's correct. Okay, there we go. <clears throat> so the um, basically the, uh, the the public land survey system is how um, <clears throat> we've divided up land in the United States, and um, we also refer that to the PLSS. This is the digital representation of that. And um, <clears throat> when I turn on Topo, oh, you can see. Hopefully, the lines will show up here. Um, you can see that there is a 10 here highlighted. It's kind of hard to see with the, I'll turn it on the street map. That's easier to see. So this is, um, we're in township um, two north, uh, three west, and we are in section 10. And so that's how property, um, that's how you uh, identify a property's legal description is by using the, the public land survey system. Um, and then um, there's a buffer tool where you can select a, um, select a polygon and define a, a radius around it, whether you wanna find all the parcels within 500 feet. And then there's also a measure tool where um, a box will pop up in the right corner, the right-hand corner, it says distance. Hopefully you can see that up there. It's kind of, um, it's like a transparent box. So you still can see some of the things underneath it, but then you can click to start drawing. And then every time you click, it will basically put a pixel down in place. And so when you double click, um, it will give you that final distance. So if you're measuring a piece of like a road or you're measuring the length of, of a barn um, or you wanted to see the length of a property, it will give you that distance. So that's uh, over six miles. So hopefully you saw that up in the upper right corner. Um, and then the legend just basically gives the land ownership information. So that, that base map um, for the street uh, base map um, it will give you the different um, uh, symbols uh, and the, um, the colors for the uh, different landowners in the state when it comes to public lands and all non-public land is, um, is hollowed. And then um, <clears throat> I think that the help is, is another thing I wanted to, to highlight here. A lot of folks have questions about, uh, about property, about the tool itself, and um, and so one of the most, um, one of the most uh, frequent questions we receive is they want, people wanna determine the air photo image dates. And so if you, if you follow these steps here, um, you can uh, look at the, uh, the, the photos at the time and the imagery and get the date for that specific service. And it does change over time. So um, if you are doing any kind of work, you might wanna record that or take screenshots. 
And then who to call for assistance, just basic um, issues like that. So if the cadastral application is ever broken, it's not working, we had some issues this morning, um, you'd want to call the Montana State Library. If you have information about um, whose name shows up or um, uh, the, any kind of details in the property record card itself, then you'd probably want to contact your local Department of Revenue, and it does have that information in there as well. Um, another, uh, we have some known issues that we um, have documented in this document. It breaks down um, also the public land survey system and the geocode itself, which is a code tied towards counties and townships and sections. And then um, uh, just really gives a lot of information about conservation easements and some of that other information that you will find in the um, in the map itself. And then at, I'm going to scroll back up to the top on page two. There's a tutorial, and um, and it'll take you through some of the things that we just um, had gone over, and it'll take you step by step, basically. Um, uh, uh, that we use for training, and I think it's a I think it's a good tutorial. If if the name uh, if some of the names don't um, uh, aren't in sync, well, it, you know these these parcels change on a monthly basis, so um, it, it could uh, some of these names it, like owner names in this search itself could change hands since this has been written. But we think this is a an excellent starting point if you want to learn more on how to um, research land information in the state of Montana. Um, it's amazing how time flies when I start talking. So I'm going to open it up for questions, Joe. Thank you very much, Erin. I'm gonna stop our, pause our recording, I should say right now and just um, take a few questions and find out if everybody's using this tool and what they think about it.